Hi, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Spooky Snack. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about probably the most well-known haunted hotel in the U.S. It is none other than the Stanley Hotel. There's a lot of information here and to be honest, the history isn't really all that long. It's the amount of ghost cases and things caught on camera that is going to be a lot of information. I have like a nine pages of notes on the Stanley Hotel because so many really interesting things have happened there without giving away too much too soon. Let's go ahead and get into the iconic Stanley Hotel. Now, first of all, I'm going to point this out right away because <laughs> I feel like this is like super noticeable. Um, I think I might have strained my wrist. <laughs> Funny enough, I was setting up a one of those ca window cat beds for my cat um, and I think I like pulled something or twist I don't know what I did but this part of my wrist really really hurts um, especially if I'm like moving it around a lot uh, or picking things up so I have a little brace on so that's what this is that's that's why I have all of a sudden a brace on my wrist but don't pay any mind to it. That's not the focus here. The focus is on the Stanley Hotel. So let's get into it. So like I briefly mentioned before, the Stanley Hotel is unarguably most known for being haunted. Countless numbers of guests have attested to having really eerie odd occurrences while at the hotel. Everything from lights turning on and off, doors opening and closing, hearing laughter, footsteps, weird drafts and cold spots and all of these things have led to the hotel's iconic reputation as being one of the most haunted hotels in america and probably one of the most famous occurrences that have ever happened there is stephen king's experience staying at the hotel which of course inspired his hit book later turned movie the shining but see the stanley hotel's history really doesn't have that much going on. It's honestly kind of rather short and doesn't have any odd experiences to relate or explain to all of the hauntings that have occurred at the hotel. Now, regardless of that, I do think it's still important to go through the hotel's history just to get a better understanding of the hotel, its location, and the, what might have led to these haunted events. The history of the Stanley Hotel actually starts back in 1903 when inventor Freeland Oscar Stanley arrived in Estes Valley, weak and underweight, suffering from the symptoms of consumption. Now, at the time, the most highly recommended treatment for consumption was dry, fresh air, sunlight, and a hearty diet. Mr. Stanley had heard of the area, and so he decided to go there to try to take some time to heal. And sure enough, it only took one season there to restore his health better than it had ever been before. Overjoyed by his experience there, he decided that he would be going back every summer for the rest of his life. Now, however, his only gripe with the area was he wasn't as content with the rustic charm and just the overall lazy vibe of the area. He decided that he wanted to turn the area into more of a resort town in 1907. So construction at the Stanley Hotel began. It was to be a 48 room grand hotel that would cater to the moderately wealthy which composed of Stanley's socialite circle back in the east as well as to those suffering from the symptoms of consumption just like Stanley had a few years prior. Together, he and his wife completed the Grand Hotel for its opening in 1909. The hotel was inspired by the luxurious hotels back on the East Coast where Stanley and his wife were from, with everything from electric lights, telephones, ensuite bathrooms, a staff that would cater to all of the guests every need, and as well as a fleet of automobiles at the guests' disposal. Now, the Stanley Hotel's development actually really helped the local town before it wasn't really considered a proper town. It wasn't until 1917 that it was became an official town with waterworks, a power plant, and civic organizations that 
all in a way were thanks to Mr. Stanley and the Stanley Hotel. Now in 1926, Mr. Stanley actually ended up selling the hotel to a private company just so that way they could run it instead of him. But unfortunately that ended up failing. So in 1929, he had to repurchase it back that way the hotel wouldn't fall into foreclosure. He then sold it again in 1930 to a fellow automobile and hotel tycoon, Roe Emery. Now, nine years later, unfortunately, Flora, Stanley's wife, would suffer from a stroke while in Estes Park and would end up later passing away in their Colorado home. Now that next year, Mr. Stanley would return back to Estes Park for the summer, but he was said to have maintained a rather inconspicuous presence there. Unfortunately, shortly after his return to Newton in 1940, Mr. Stanley died on October 2nd of heart failure. By the 1970s, the excitement surrounding the hotel had really died off due to the lack of care and investment within the hotel. And honestly, the hotel probably would have succumbed to foreclosure had it not been for author Stephen King's exciting arrival. Now, this is where the main bits of the hotel's history I'm gonna kind of like end it because moving forward is when most of the paranormal experiences started to happen. And as you can tell, like I said, generally speaking, not really much happened at the hotel. There was, however, one rather odd occurrence that happened that does lead into a paranormal story. Now, this happened in room 217, which is also the room that Stephen King would later on end up staying in. One day, a housemaid named Elizabeth Wilson was going through the rooms and she was in room 217. I believe she was relighting the uh, candles within the room. Now, it's said that there was a gas leak within the room. So when she lit a match to light the candles, it let off a huge explosion in the room pushing her through the floor of the hotel room. And surprisingly enough, she actually did not die, thankfully. She only suffered from two broken ankles. Like, that is some really good luck. And she would live, go on to live a very long life. She didn't end up dying until she was 90. But soon after her death, the hotel started receiving reports of a ghostly figure hovering and wandering through the halls of the hotel and it was said that it looked like elizabeth wilson when she had worked at the hotel some of the reports have said that like unmarried couples who are sharing a bed will feel an invisible force separating them within their bed and single men have woken up to find their bags repacked and left outside of their doors almost as if it's a sign telling them to leave this would honestly be the only really odd actual event to occur at the Stanley Hotel, at least from any reports that the Stanley website and any sources that I came across would report on. So I think it's rather interesting that some place that is supposed to be super haunted and known to be super haunted. And like I said, we'll get into the actual like paranormal cases and ghosts that have been caught in photos and stuff. So I don't think this place isn't haunted. I just think it's interesting that a place that hasn't had any necessarily like traumatic experiences happen is so haunted. Now, the Stanley Hotel actually earned the reputation of being a haunted hotel before even Stephen King's arrival to the hotel. During the years since his death in 1940, the apparition of Mr. Stanley has said to be seen by guests checking in at the reception desk as well as claims that his wife, Flora Stanley, who was a pianist, can sometimes be heard playing the piano in the empty music room. Guests have reported strange occurrences, everything from shadowy figures to eerie laughter, flickering lights, and items moving on their own in every room of the hotel compound. And in recent years, a lot of paranormal investigators have done investigations at the Stanley Hotel, including Ghost Adventures, who are my favorite, they're on Travel Channel, as well as Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi Channel. Now, I'm sure it comes as no surprise, it definitely didn't to me, but that the most popularly requested room to stay in the hotel is, of course, 
room 217, which is where Stephen King had his super odd occurrence. Now this allegedly is also the room that caused Jim Carrey to run fleeing out of the room when he was filming Dumb and Dumber back in the 1990s. Now obviously I need to go into the super notable experience that is Stephen King's experience at the Stanley Hotel. Now Stephen King and his wife Tabitha were living in Boulder and he was reportedly working on his project Dark Shine and was really struggling with it at the time. So he was looking for an isolated area that he could go to work on his novel and locals supposedly recommended Estes Park to him. Stephen King had heard of the Stanley and he had been wanting to go there so he decided hey, why not basically. Now upon arriving they found out that the hotel was going to be closing for the winter so there's going to be a limited amount of crew there and they were going to be the only guests checked in to the hotel. Nonetheless, they were checked into room 217, the presidential suite. They were served dinner, but it was in a dining room that was completely empty for everyone except them. So all of the chairs were stacked onto the tables except for at their table. I feel like that would give just a really ominous vibe, definitely. Now, as you could imagine, the Stanley's grand size being located in such a remote location and it's just eerie desolation probably did get to Stephen King a little bit. And that night is when Stephen King would have the most life-changing nightmare of his life. In a retelling of the nightmare he had that night, Stephen King said, quote, I dreamed of my three-year-old son running through the corridors, looking back over his shoulder, eyes wide, screaming. He was being chased by a fire hose. I woke up with a tremendous jerk, sweating all over, within an inch of falling out of bed. I got up, lit a cigarette, sat in a chair, looking out the window at the Rockies, and by the time the cigarette was done, I had the bones of The Shining firmly set in my mind. End quote. Now, like I said, this experience would lead to the hotel's notorious reputation as one of the U.S.'s most popular haunted hotel locations. Beyond Stephen King's experience, there have been plenty of other odd occurrences that have happened after his. One experience is that of Stephanie Earls of OutThereColorado.com. She wrote about her story and her stay at the hotel. While there, she went on one of the ghost tours that the hotel offers. And upon returning back to her room, her door swept closed right behind her. Now, admittedly, she said like right before that, she had opened the windows in her room. So she kind of just shrugged it off and assumed that the wind blew it closed. But what really surprised her was when moments later, the same door to her hotel room slowly creaked wide open to a completely empty hallway. Now this definitely did shake her up a bit, but she was able to move past it and decided to start getting ready for bed. And she decided she wanted to rewatch The Shining, obviously, uh, to commemorate her stay there at the Stanley Hotel. After she was done watching and was ready to head to bed, she turned off the TV and drifted off to sleep until she was awoken by a blood curdling scream coming from outside her window. She then claims to hear the scream again, echoing through the sleepy valleys outside her windows. She said it sounded like a child in terror too, which is something literally straight out of a horror movie and would have been terrifying to wake up to. Screams and odd noises are fairly commonly reported by both guests as well as employees who work at the hotel. Longtime staff can attest to there being four ghosts that regularly are seen and experienced at the hotel. They are Lucy, Paul, Eddie, and Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth is, like I said, is that maid who had the insane experience in room 217 where there was the gas leak and it exploded and she fell through the floor. And once again, she did not die from the actual explosion. She ended up dying later on in her 90s, but her ghost, after she died, her ghost has been seen numerous times throughout the hotel. Now this might be because she spent so much time there. She also lived in Estes Park, so maybe it's just like a location thing or, I mean, 
my theory, she had a super traumatic experience at that hotel with the explosion. Like, I cannot begin to imagine how, like, shaken up I would be if I experienced something like that. So, maybe she roams the hotel because not only did she spend so much time there, but she had an insane experience there too. But let's get into the other ghosts that are said to regularly be seen at the hotel. Now, the story of Lucy is honestly a very disheartening, sad story. Like, I feel so bad because this is an experience that it supposedly did happen, but I could not find any official reports on it happening and it's kind of an assumed connection but according to the hotel a young girl around the age of 13 who was believed to be a runaway of some sort had been squatting in the basement of the stanley hotel now like i said this is a supposed occurrence but i'll be honest i kind of believe that it it sounds like it really did happen um just because of the details of the story but the story goes that there was supposed to be construction that was going to be happening down in the basement at the Stanley so two maintenance workers went down there just to check in do whatever it is they were going to do when they came across Lucy uh, squatting there in the basement and unfortunately when they found her they forced her to leave which why they couldn't give this poor girl a place to stay for the night, I don't understand, especially because that night the temperatures were super low. It, they had dropped below zero. So this was like during the winter time, like super freezing cold. I understand that like the hotel, especially if this was back in the day, was closed during the winter, but I don't see any reason why she couldn't have been let to stay there. But anyway, like I said, that night the temperature was below zero. This poor girl was forced to leave and her body was later found dead, obviously from the elements. To this day, a lot of people report seeing her wandering through the halls, tampering with lights, and she's known to be really active with communicating and typically will answer questions with staff and other investigators who come to visit by using flashlights. She'll turn them on and off to answer yes or no to questions. Now, one interesting report I came across was one Ohio native named Stephanie Riedel. I really hope I'm saying her name right. Her and her coworker came to the hotel to visit and they were also doing one of those ghost tours. Now, after their guide had told them about all the numerous ghost reports that had happened, they obviously started taking pictures. Now, when Stephanie and her coworker were going back through all of the photographs they had taken, they saw in a photo that was taken on their way to the concert hall basement so as they were going downstairs they caught something pretty significant in one of their photos in the photo you can see their tour guide is descending down the stairs but to his left you'll see hiding behind a table it appears to be the ghostly image of a young girl she has dark hair and she's wearing a pink dress and it's presumed that this ghost is the ghost of lucy now this is a photo that Stephanie's co-worker actually took, but um, it seems like Stephanie was the one who did more of the press uh, on it or was the one that was mainly asked about it. And she said, quote, we were told to take lots of pictures. I'm sure to try and capture orbs or ghosts. Many green orbs were caught in pictures, but I don't think anything is as creepy as this photo taken by my co-worker, a little girl in a hot pink dress who is definitely not on our tour. I am convinced this is the ghost of Lucy. Though I doubt if anyone would believe me, there was only one time throughout the tour where I felt any strange energy or feeling, and it was right here, heading down to the basement of the concert hall. Which, if that's true, that that's definitely, you know, that, that definitely says something because, I mean, if you're someone who also believes in ghosts and stuff, like many people always talk about having odd you know, physical sensations. Like they feel just either negative vibes or emotions, or they actually physically feel dizzy or just uncomfortable in many different ways. And if this is truly the only time that she felt uncomfortable, and it just so happens to be where they got this image of a little ghost girl that looks to be possibly Lucy. Now, I will say the only thing about that is the report on 
the incident with the girl was that is supposed supposedly Lucy, the girl who was squatting. They said 13. The girl in the image to me doesn't look 13. She looks a lot younger than that. She looks maybe like around eight or something. It could be the ghost of a different little girl, maybe not necessarily Lucy, and they're just, you know, attributing the two stories. But either way, though, this photo looks pretty convincing to me. Now, another ghost that is said to frequently haunt the hotel is the ghost of Paul. Now, Paul actually was an employee that worked at the hotel from 1995 to 2005. And unfortunately, he actually died from a heart attack en route from the hotel to a hospital because he was suffering from chest pains. Now, Paul has said that while he was working there, he was kind of a jack of all trades, kind of just assisting in whatever it is that the hotel really needed help with at the time. But the main thing that he was known for was enforcing the hotel's 11 p.m. curfew. Now, because of this, it's supposedly not uncommon to hear the words get out yelled at you at, during after hours. And this is thought to be the ghost of Paul enforcing the 11 p.m. curfew. Now, a construction worker actually a few years ago thinks he might have had a more aggressive run in with Paul. The construction worker believes that while he was working in the after hours, that Paul was pulling him towards the door. He said he could feel two hands as if they were pulling and nudging him towards the door as if to leave. Paul is also said to be known for flickering the lights during some of the tour groups. But that construction worker, I feel like if I felt that, I would just dip. I would just leave. I'd be like, all right, obviously something wants me to go. I think it's time for me to go. <laughs> the last of the four ghosts that I mentioned is Eddie. Now, Eddie actually had the nickname Stinky Man for a little while, which I think is kind of rude, but it was apparently because when his ghost would be present, there would be like a foul odor in the air that would also be present. Apparently later on, the smell went away and they don't experience that anymore. But so he used to have the nickname Stinky Man. Which, like I said, that, 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 that's a little rude. A lot of the reports of people who experience Eddie say that his presence seems to cause a lot of discomfort. A lot of psychics and mediums who have visited say that this might be due to the fact of when Eddie was alive, he experienced a lot of hardships in his life, which is really sad and I feel really bad for him. But it is reported that he's kind of lightened up a bit basically and that he's a little bit more of like a prankster. He also apparently is a bit of a ladies man. A lot of female guests say to experience feeling like their hair is being stroked or getting kisses on the cheek and stuff like that. All I have to say is Eddie, there's such a thing as consent, please. Um, but Otherwise, it seems like Eddie isn't a very aggressive ghost beyond that. Other reports include the sounds of like celebrations going on and excited party goers, as well as children's laughter, which is especially prevalent on the fourth floor, which is where children and nannies apparently used to stay. Many ghost investigators who have stayed there have also claimed to experience hearing noises, weird knocking noises, and seeing strange lights and shadows and orbs. Herbs. Now, one experience is actually from the Sci Fi Channel's Ghost Hunters show. Supposedly, their lead investigator, Jason Hawes, had a very interesting experience there. While investigating, he was in one of the rooms when a glass supposedly on the nightstand shattered. Now, this was not long after, also, the closet door was reportedly opening and closing. I didn't watch the full episode of their investigation at the Stanley Hotel. But from the clips that I could find on YouTube, unfortunately, the location of the camera and how it's set up, you actually can't see the glass on the nightstand and see it shatter. So it's all just based off of his report. And because of that, I'm a little hesitant to accept that as actually happening. Sorry, sir. I just got to be honest. I didn't see it happen, so I can't honestly give a fair opinion about it. Now, if you take the historic Stanley night tour, you can actually get an in-depth look into the underground tunnels underneath the hotel. Now, these caves have a large concentration of limestone and quartz. 
which some people theorize helps capture the paranormal energy and is the reason why the hotel is as haunted as it is. I've heard that before. Now, like I said, I love ghost adventures. I do. I love watching the show. And in some of the professionals and investigators that they've like to talk to have talked about the potential that certain rocks and stones can harbor energy and that that might explain why some places are more haunted than others and it's been something that they've explored before so this isn't a brand new theory to come out of just the stanley hotel this has been theorized in plenty of other places but the fact that there is however like quartz limestone and magnetite underneath the hotel if the theory does have any sort of substance to it then the Stanley Hotel is a perfect example of how it doesn't necessarily have to have anything traumatic happen there, maybe just a strong connection to that area and to that land. The tunnels are often used by the employees to help get around the hotel. I don't know why exactly. To me, that sounds really sketch and really like creepy, like I wouldn't want to, but supposedly they do and they have access to it. And it just said that they believe that there is the ghost of one employee still lingering down there. Current employees say that you can smell home-baked goods coming from absolutely nowhere within the tunnels. And they often attribute this to the pastry chef that used to work at the hotel when it first opened. But let's get into the actual ghosts caught on camera stuff. That's where I believe the proof of the hauntings of the Stanley Hotel actually come from. Now the grand staircase that is in between floors is supposed to be a really big paranormal hotspot within the hotel. There have been tons of photographs taken there that have caught ghosts on camera. The staircase has been dubbed the vortex just because of its tornado-like amount of spiritual energy there and it's almost like a paranormal portal for all of the ghosts in the hotel. Guests often report feeling cold spots throughout the staircase as well as getting bouts of dizziness and some even report that it feels as though people just walk straight through them on that staircase. Now the apparitions of Mr. and Mrs. Stanley have actually been seen on that staircase as well and they've often been seen holding hands just looking about at the hustle and bustle that is going on on that staircase. I'm sure if they are, they're probably looking at it pretty proud of what they've created and seeing the amount of people that love coming there. Henry Yao, the public relations director of the Children's Museum of Houston, is one of those people who happened to catch a ghost in one of his photos on the staircase. While Henry was in the lobby of the hotel, he used the panoramic setting on his phone camera to take a photo of the staircase. He said, quote, I don't like when people are in my shots. So when I took this photo, I had waited until the grand stairwell was cleared of people before taking the pic, end quote. Now that night when he went to bed, he felt strangely ill. And so he went straight to bed, although he didn't sleep very well that night. When he woke up in the morning and looked through his photos, he was astounded to see what he found. Now, as you can see in the photo, it looks as though there is a woman in old fashioned clothing standing at the top of the last part of the staircase. Now, like he said, he waited until there was nobody there. So who is this woman? in this photograph. Obviously, Henry posted this on social media and captioned it with, by golly, I think I may have captured a hashtag ghost at hashtag Stanley Hotel. Okay, now once again, very similar to the other photograph, I don't see how this one could be faked. Like, that's definitely not just a person standing there. Now, yes, you could argue that the panoramic setting on photos, like if there's something in motion, usually it ends up looking really weird or fuzzy or just distorted in some way or another. But the way that she's positioned on this staircase and just how ghostly and partially transparent she looks, I'm not gonna lie, I really do believe this photo. I mean, I like to think that he was telling the truth about he waited until there was nobody there and it doesn't take long to take a panoramic photo so maybe this is mrs flora stanley herself coming down the staircase about to go play the piano now another experience that happened on the same staircase involves the mosling family from aurora colorado they participated in the spirit tour back in 2017. after returning home they had noticed that 
One of the photographs that the father, John, had taken seemed to show what looks like a little girl walking down the staircase. John and his wife, Jessica, claimed that there was absolutely no kids a part of their touring party. So there's no way that these kids were there. They even checked with their kids and their kids' girl boyfriends and girlfriends to make sure that they didn't forget about any children that had been on the tour. And they all said the same thing there was not any children in their tour group. They said, quote, at first we tried to be logical and think we somehow missed her. So we asked our kids, their girlfriends and our friend if they remembered seeing a little girl. Nobody did. We do not remember seeing anything on the stairs when we took the picture. Now, obviously while the main girl walking down the staircase is the focal point of the photo, there actually looks to be a second little girl caught in this same photo. The Mosling said when they took this photo, there was only two people sitting on the staircase, which you can see towards the top of the photo. There's the tour guide and then someone sitting while holding their cell phone. However, the photo does seem to show the figure of a third person on that same staircase. Now, one might argue maybe they just missed this person or just didn't remember them sitting there. But if you look closely at the photo, you actually don't see the lower half of whoever this is on the staircase. If you look at the other two people, the tour guide and the person holding the cell phone, you can easily see where they are, like through the slats of the stair rail. But this, this apparition, you can only see the top half of them. You can't see anything below them. And once again, the family claims that they did not see any children whatsoever in their tour group. Now, you could just be really good at Photoshop. Like, of course, um, there's no denying that there's always possibly going to be somebody who is creative enough to come up with this. But once again, it, it looks pretty legit to me. And if everyone that's there, yes, they could all, of course, be in on it. But if none of them saw any kids, I mean, this might just be some ghost girls caught on the staircase. Now, actually back in May of this year, 2021, a woman caught what appears to be the ghost of a woman in one of the windows of the Stanley Hotel. Kim Kimberly, which by the way, I fucking love your name, Kim Kimberly, Kim Kim, like Kim Kardashian could never. <laughs> But um, she decided to do one of the ghost tours of the hotel as well. Now she said, quote, they tell you to take pictures, so I took a ton. You can ask my family. I take at least two to three pictures in a row of the same thing, end quote. So Kim was taking photos of some of the windows outside of the hotel. Now Kim said she did not see anyone or anything in any of these windows beyond just the curtains. But when she looked back on her photos is when she noticed a ghost girl in one of her photos. Now, she claims that she took the first photo at 9.03 on May 27th, and the second photo right after at 9.04. She said, quote, there was no one in the windows when I took those photos, and my friends were taking photos as well, and they didn't see it either until I looked back at my photos. Some people are saying curtains. The curtains are the exact same in every window. They are see-through, and if it was curtains, what is the dark area that looks like hair and the skin tone color? That can't be a shadow. If it was a mannequin, I would have seen it while taking the photo, and others would have caught it on camera as well. Besides, I took a photo at 9.03 and 9.04, and it's there in one and not the other, end quote. And also, she said to those who claim that it was Photoshop that she doesn't even know what that is. Now, admittedly, I don't have the actual other family's photographs or any of the other people's testimonies who were there, but uh, I'm I'm pretty inclined to believe her. I I believe you, Kim, especially with a name like Kim Kimberly. I gotta believe. <laughs> But yes, that, my friends, is the Stanley Hotel. I know this that's kind of an abrupt ending, but that's the most recent incident that I can find of a ghost caught on camera at the Stanley Hotel, which I think is pretty legit. I found this case really interesting because in comparison to the other ones that I've done so far, most of those places have some kind of a traumatic story or event that has occurred that in some ways can give reasoning to why some of these haunted events might happen. The Stanley Hotel, however, beyond the catastrophic explosion and poor Miss Elizabeth Wilson, thank God she didn't die in it, but rest in peace, homie. Um, there hasn't, there was nothing 
crazy or traumatic that occurred at the hotel. So why is it so haunted? Now, I will say, I do know that Colorado especially is in an area where there was a lot of indigenous tribes um, from the Americas that lived there. So I don't know if Estes Park or the specific location of the Stanley Hotel might have some sort of cultural significance to any indigenous tribes and maybe that has something to do with it like maybe there was maybe that was sacred land i mean if we've learned anything from america colonizers took over a bunch of like sacred land so who's to know like it very well could be sacred land at one point or another yeah otherwise it just seems like the stanley hotel is quite the paranormal hotspot. And honestly, I would love to visit the Stanley Hotel one day. I definitely want to. And if I am able to, it would be really cool to actually do some like paranormal investigating there. But who knows? We'll see. Maybe if, um, maybe one day, maybe one day and I get some friends to come with me because a girl is not going to do that alone. Let me tell you that. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I knew that the Stanley Hotel was such an iconic place so I know this video is going to be a little bit longer but I wanted to make sure to include all of these super interesting photos and stories that have happened there but I hope you guys really enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on the Stanley Hotel what are your thoughts on all the photographs that I showed you guys today do you think any of them are hoaxes or do you also think that most of them if not all of them are actual ghosts caught on camera. Also, let me know in the comments any future haunted locations or paranormal stories that you'd like me to cover. And as always, make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, as well as subscribing down below so you can keep up with any future spooky snack uploads. Otherwise, I hope you guys had a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in my next episode of Spooky Snack. Bye, guys.